Hi everybody, I thought I'd come out with my video. As you know, all of YouTube is a buzz with the Comet Nishimura and the upcoming Fall Feast. I don't have a lot of space on my computer, so I'm going to try and keep this very short. But anyways, I was watching Brother Chad's video, Watchmen on the Wall 88. And I'm going to include his clip here and go from there. But I have the title, Comet Nishimura Tabernacles Rapture Sign. Folks, this is amazing and incredible. This thing, this green comet shows up. Absolutely incredible comet. And it's going to be uh, closer to the sun than Mercury on September 17th, which is right before when they're going to begin the SDG Summit. And then shortly after, it's going to depart the solar system. Look at the timing of all this and how there's an ultimate convergence going on. Here's an interesting fact, folks. Many are saying that the green comet Nishimura orbits the sun every 430 years. That's a very interesting number. Why is it interesting? Well, when you go to the book of Exodus, chapter 12, go down to verse 40 and 41. This is talking about uh, the Lord delivering the Israelites from the Egyptians. Listen to this, verse 40. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. Interesting. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the selfsame day, it came to pass that all the host of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. So you're telling me that deliverance from Egypt happened at the end of 430 years. This world is a type of Egypt. And are we about to be delivered while this thing is going through our solar system? So after watching Chad's video, I went to Exodus chapter 12 because this revelation came to me. But I backed up to verse 37, and I'll read the first part. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Sukkot, and that's where we get the word Sukkot or tabernacles. And then going down to verse 39, and they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt, for it was not leavened, so unleavened bread, because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry. Neither had they prepared for themselves any victuals. And as Chad said in verses 40 to 42, and it came to pass at the end of 430 years, like the comet, which I believe is that sign, even the self same day it came to pass, and all the host of the Lord went out of the land of Egypt, so the great exodus. Verse 42, and, and it was a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out of the land of Egypt, the exodus. This is that night of the Lord to be observed of all. So I think there are several key things to take from Exodus 12, in particular from verses 39 to 42. It says, unleavened cakes, for it was not unleavened, so unleavened bread, and this is before the Lord changed the calendar uh, from Tishri to Nisan. So instead of unleavened bread being from Nisan 15 through 21, it is still Tishri 15 to 21. In other words, Sukkot or Tabernacles. And it also says, and it could not tarry. This was after the 430 years, which I believe this comet Nishimura represents a sign of a forewarning. And even on the selfsame day, so the start of Tabernacles, so Tishri 15, all of the hosts of the Lord went out of the land of Egypt. So the great exodus occurred on Tishri 17. And also, 
it is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out of the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord to be much observed of all children. So I think like Habakkuk, which I'll read here shortly, it could not tarry any longer. And it will be a night to be much observed. This is that night of the Lord to be observed of all, all of the children and unleavened bread. So many of you are familiar with this, but in Habakkuk 2 verses 3, for the vision is yet for an appointed time and tabernacles is an appointed time or Sukkot. But at the end, it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So I believe that the Nishimura Kama is assigned to us and it passed close to the earth, uh, closest on, uh, I think, September 11th and 12th. And it goes around the sun on this uh, 17th of uh, September. I think this is the onset. It will no longer tarry. So it will be fulfillment of Habakkuk 2.3. So again, the unleavened bread, which was on Sukkot, which is now on 15 to 21 Nisan, but before the Lord changed the calendar, and this was when they made it into Sinai, it was still the seventh month, not the first month. So 15 through 21 Tishri, Sukkot or Tabernacles, I believe will be a very, very high rapture watch time frame and at night, as it says in Exodus 12 that I just read. But I don't, I'll don't. i caveat the, and say this. I'm not saying this is the rapture. Hopefully it is the rapture in our great Exodus out of here. But I think this bears to be a very high watch period of time. And also something that I noted from the time that Nishimura discovered this comet on August 11th through the time that it exits Virgo per Revelation 12, part two, that Brother Patrick and the uh, whole community of Christ is all a buzz on. And I think this alludes to Revelation chapter 12, verse four, where the tail drew one third of the stars and cast it to the earth. I just think it's a prelude sign to that. But from August 11th, all the way through the time that it exits Virgo, it goes through four Maseroth signs. And that is one third of the 12 signs. So four quote unquote zodiac signs of the Maseroth that the tail of Mishimura travels through and the, well, the comet itself during that time frame from when it was first discovered all the way through the time that it exits the wound of Virgo with the child. So this is from Gemini, Cancer, Leo, and Virgo, one third of the heavenly signs. So with the passage of the comet Nishimura and the child asteroid, which is going through the womb of Virgo and the fall feast coming up, regardless of the start date, I know there's many calendars out there, but I think from Exodus 12 that it is describing that the Exodus occurred during Sukkot at night during a time period of unleavened bread, which will be or was at that time 15 through 21 Tishri before the calendar was changed by the Lord when they arrived in Mount Sinai 
to Nisan, but rather it was still the seventh month. On the same day at nighttime, I think the highest watch will be more so nighttime of Tishri 15, but I think this whole time period bears watching from Tishri 15 through 21 as a possible rapture time frame. Anyways, I wanted to keep this video short, so I'll conclude right here. But again, please watch if it doesn't occur at the Feast of Trumpets or the Day of Atonement. Please watch more so Tishri 15, but the whole time period of 15 through 21 Tishri, more so at nighttime, as it says in Exodus 12. Anyways, I hope this video has been a blessing to you. I hope that this is the rapture. But again, like I said, this is just the very highest watch period uh, according to what transpired in Exodus 12 with the great Exodus, the great rapture uh, uh, for us, our Exodus. But I hope this video has been a blessing. And I hope to see you all uh, in the sky. So I'll talk to you later. Take care.